So, for whom the browser dev tools, I did not pick this talk name. Here's kind of the conceit of this talk idea, is what if we did like a dev tools foo meetup where it's like tips and tricks with dev tools, uh, live, crowdsourced, with prizes. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, the reason why I would love something like that as a daily dev tools user is I still find things on the internet or when sitting next to somebody who's developing and they do something in their dev tools and I'm like, what was that? How'd you do that? Show me that. Um, so I have you know, my knowledge about it, but there's knowledge gaps. You know, I have my way that I use dev tools, but there's tons of ways that I don't use dev tools. And as JavaScript developers, um, we can actually feed off each other and kind of, you know, uh, all learn together. So I love the posts online that it's like, you know, like the command line foo, everybody know command line foo.com, where it's like, just show me your best bash trick. And then they kind of vote them up and vote them down and, and everybody can learn. Um, there was a recent Reddit post, or maybe it was a couple of years ago, but it floated back up, which was uh, terminal related, but it was like basically like, what's the one command that you can't, like once you learned about it, you're like, I can't believe I ever lived without that. And I think they're inside of DevTools, they've gotten so much better lately um, that if we actually had a crowdsourced version, it would be way better than if I got up here and just talked to you about all the stuff that I know and all the tips and tricks that I know about DevTools. So that was the conceit. And then Zach was like, yeah, let's do that. And so he started the, he went to the meetup.com and put for whom the browser dev tools as the name of the talk. And I was like, that's not my talk name, dude. <laughs> but I was actually like, but that's a pretty sweet talk name. So I was going to go with Chrome, Chrome Foo, the legend dev tenues. <laughs> because I said, remember, it's like a, it's like a, uh, Dev tools foo. So I was going with like the Kung Fu theme. But I was like, but Zach's is actually a little bit better than mine. So, so then this happened. And I put a comment in the meetup thread. Did anybody see this? I know a couple people saw it. Let me ask you this. Do you just get all the emails on those? Or can you turn those off? Does everybody get emailed every time somebody does these? OK. Yeah? All right. So some of y'all are like sick and tired of this. So I started a monster here a little bit. And I said, well, the real question is, so let's, let's take this crowdsourcing idea, you know, because we're going to be a crowdsource talk, and let's crowdsource the name, and let's all come together, and let's see how many different titles for this talk that we can come up with before March 4th. So I started this off, and I said, OK, it's the DevTools Wear Prada, AKA, better the dev tool you know than the dev tool you don't, courtesy of John Hobbs. AKA Mad Hacks Beyond Thunder Chrome. I was going with a movie theme, but nobody picked up on that. And they just kind of went their own ways. Like Juan came in with video games, and I was like, what are you doing, man? Oh, Rats and Clank. Yeah. But Master and Commander. Th that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> Some of these actually ended up turning into tweets just because they were of such high quality. I think Zach tweeted another Dom, another dollar. This was my personal favorite. I pity DevTool. <laughs> That's the kind of talk name where I was like, dang it, Hobbs. Why did you think of that and I didn't think of that? Can everyone tell me what DevTools does? <laughs> I'm not sure who did this one. Does anybody have that avatar? That was you? Nice one. The Chromega Man, <laughs> AKA Ratchet and Clank, DevTools of Destruction, yeah. AKA To Air is Human, To Debug Needs DevTools. AKA, you can dev tools all the code some of the time and some of the code all the time, but you cannot dev tools all the code all the time. <laughs> that wins the, rec the longest, lamest, I mean, longest. Be cool, kids, stay in dev tools. <laughs> this is just good stuff. AKA, Con Soul Air, one of the best Nick Cage movies, which isn't hard to, to do. Master and Chromander, that was a good one, Juan. I like that one. Inconsolable Dev Tools. I'm not even sure what that is. Yeah, don't ask me. Okay. I think <laughs> don't ask you, your name's on it. Or your face. 
<laughs> I thought it was like uh, Despicable Me, like, but it's not, it's inconsolable. This was a stretch. The greatest trick Firefox DevTools ever pulled was convincing the world it doesn't exist. That's actually my personal favorite. <laughs> AKA inspect the fifth element. AKA font face off. AKA DevTools and bank going Chrome Mando. That's the wretched thing. That's yeah. the video gamer in you. AKA playing the DevTools advocate. Who's this in the room? No. AKA idle hands are the devil's tools. You can't even see that avatar, but I don't know who this was. It looks like, uh, what's that place in Australia? The, yeah. AKA Adventures in Garbage Collection. Does anybody know who this is? I don't know you. Stayed home? I riffed off this one and I thought, well, it's Adventures in Babysitting and there's a movie, right? So it's like Adventures in Browser City. AKA Biochrome, AKA Chromeo and Juliet. And so to answer my question, how many titles can we come up with before March 4th? And the answer is 26. Yeah. Not too bad. All right. Not too bad. But there was still a problem with this from my perspective. Wait, is that 26 factorial? <laughs> <laughs> That's just extreme excitement. <laughs> now, that's pretty good, but actually, from my perspective, that was pretty weak because those 26 were generated by like seven of us, eight of us, and there's 447 people in the group. What were you guys all thinking? Like, were, I'm sure you were super annoyed, probably. <laughs> like, why do I keep getting emails? What's this Chromando thing? But I was hoping for a little bit more interaction. So then I got started getting a little bit concerned about my idea for this talk. Because my idea for this talk is live, crowdsourced uh, tips and tricks. And I thought if I can only get six or seven out of 447 to actually just throw in a stupid uh, talk name, and maybe it was just too, too dumb, how are we going to get people involved? And that's when I figured it out. Cash and prizes, that's how you get people involved. So I promised that there would be cash and prizes. I got 20 bucks right here, so there's the cash. We also have prizes. Lisa, you get the machine on your way. What's that? Oh no, the, the cash is staying with me. I just brought it. <laughs> <laughs> I said there would be cash. There's cash here. And there's prizes. The cash is not part of the prizes. That's crazy. <laughs> so everybody's heard of swag, right? Pretty common amongst developers. Does everybody know that's an actually an acronym? Stuff we all get. Stuff we all get. Swag stands for stuff we all get. And I didn't bring any swag, but I did bring some swag. Can anybody guess what swag stands for? Stuff we ought to get. Close. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Stuff winners only get. <laughs> so y'all aren't walking away with cash and prizes, but those who participate get some shirts. So we've got shirts, and I've lined up four different kinds of shirts. Uh, Sight pen shirts. Nick, do you want to grab that and show it? Y'all know what Sight pen is? Can we exchange for different t-shirts? <laughs> 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 do you want to talk? Do you want to tell them? Because I don't even know what Site Pen is besides like they do do dojo stuff. We do is that it? Yeah. We do dojo. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This was. I'm doing that training. I'm going to be teaching it in April. So. Nick is doing a Site Pen training on dojo in April. 20% discount. They are sponsoring our drinks later, and there's a Site Pen shirt. Object lateral shirts. Where's the shirt, man? Is the internet going down? Sure. Not so there it is. So uh, for those who don't know, Object Lateral is my software company. Um, we write cost, custom, thoughtful software. And these shirts don't exist yet. 
They're, at, they're being printed right now, but they're pretty rad. Uh, so I got object lateral shirts, change log shirts. Wearing one here. Has anybody, everybody heard of the change log? Show of hands. Change log. The change log.com. Okay. You have to check out the change log. It is a podcast, it's a blog, and it's a weekly newsletter. And we cover what's fresh and new in open source. So on the podcast, we interview open source contributors, um, usually quite notable ones, uh, talking about their projects, especially ones that have recently taken off. Uh, for example, recently we've interviewed um, Jeremy Sayens, who's the uh, author of Martini, uh, the new uh, Golang uh, web framework. We interviewed, um, who's the guys at Walmart who had their, their big node uh, Black Friday. Yeah. All sorts of guests. So check out the podcast. Uh, from the blog's perspective, I'm the managing editor of the blog. Um, we try to shed light on open source projects that deserve it. So uh, two angles of that from your guys' perspective. First of all, if you have an open source project that like nobody knows about, but you think it's pretty cool, and you'd like to get that some coverage, talk to me. I would love to cover local uh, developers and what they're up to. And secondly, if you have a knack for uncovering open source projects and finding the cool new thing, uh, and you're interested in contributing to the changelog, talk to me also. We're a small group, but we are uh, looking to grow just slightly. So we got changelog shirts. Uh, we got interface shirts. Um, interface is a web school that I'm teaching at. This is a, a picture of one of the co-founders, Jake Stutzman from Elevate. I had to use this picture because he's just so happy. Uh, wearing one of those interface tees. Those come in like three or four different colors, so if you win one of those, you'll have to pick between orange. I got, I got a green one right here. At Interface, we teach web development. We teach uh, agile project management. This summer, we'll be doing a bunch of workshops. One of, for you guys that might be interesting is um, I'll be doing a three-day AngularJS workshop. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, talk to me afterwards. And I came up with this really cool idea of how we're actually going to run this thing. So we got a whole bunch of people, and everybody has uh, their ideas about tips and tricks. But we need to actually have a way to facilitate a contest. So we're going to have a dry t-shirt contest. And it's going to be at uh, this link. So if you guys are online, go to bit.ly slash nebraskajs dash DTSC for dry t-shirt contest. And you should, should see something that looks like this. This was just a little Angular app that I put together yesterday um, as I've been procrastinating this talk ever since, I, uh, <laughs> ever since I said I'd do it. But it's just here to facilitate uh, the dry t-shirt contest. So I've kind of preloaded it with a few things that I will do. Um, but if you go there, you can submit, and this is using uh, Firebase, which is a, kind of a backend as a service. They have a cool uh, Angular integration called Angular Fire. So what Firebase offers, which is really kind of cool, I w this is all just an excuse to test this stuff out, uh, is what they call three-way data binding. So this is kind of a real-time app. You know, as I change things, you all have it open on your screen. Uh, you'll be updated immediately, that kind of stuff. And all you do is you enter your, your, uh, enter your dev tools tip or trick into this place. We will all see it. You can then vote on them. You can only vote on other people's. You can vote once. Um, and I will do a little kind of an intro to DevTools, and then I'll hop back over here. Hopefully, it'll be more than just my own right there. As you enter it, it hooks you up with a, ooh, you could ignore specific code or libraries when stepping through code. Nice one. So let me just vote that to the top and then get back over here. Um, you guys can go ahead and just be entering your stuff and voting on stuff, and we'll hop back over. And what we'll do is we'll call people down who've, who've come to the top, and they'll demo their trick. And then they'll want a shirt. I won't give them a shirt yet, because I said they're being printed. But uh, we'll, that's how we'll run it. So what I'm going to do in the meantime, although I have this inclination to just like check, is anybody? <gasps> There's another one. 
So if, you're, if you know what dev tools are and how to use them and all the basics, you should be filling out your tips and tricks during this portion. And if you don't, you should be listening to me because I'm going to give a very basic intro and walk you through the different portions. And then we'll get to the tricks. So developer tools, um, and I'm going to use Chrome for, uh, for my stuff. If you want to do uh, Safari's developer tools or Firefox's developer tools, I have those browsers also available. I also have Canary on here, uh, if your trick has to have Canary. But I like Chrome's developer tools the best. I used to be more of just a WebKit developer tools guy, as Chrome and Safari's developer tools were very much in sync for a long time, as their rendering engine was as well. Um, but what was it, like Safari 5 or something? The Safari team decided to put their own skin on their dev tools. And now when I open them up, I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I kind of fell off that bandwagon and uh, prefer Chrome. So entering dev tools, there's kind of three ways to get in. The first one is through the developer toolbar in the menu. So you can go to view developer, developer tools. And that will pop them open. You can also uh, just do on a Mac, it's Command Alt I. On Windows, it's probably Control Control Alt I, something like that. And you can do that as a toggle. Um, if you have a specific element that you're trying to inspect, you can also right click its inspect element. That will pop over in the Dev Tools as well. Once you have Dev Tools open, there's a handful of panels or tabs. Um, these first are all standard. This AngularJS one is actually a, an extension called Angular Batarang, so that's not in your, in your typical setup. But you can enable and uh, disable those through the uh, extensions menus. The first tab has your element inspector. On the left-hand side, it has your style um, and uh, additional properties on the right hand side. These styles here show the uh, actual rules as applied to the CSS selectors, to the um, to the elements, and then they also have the computed. So the computed is what you have currently selected. It is showing you the exact computed properties as displayed. And then this one is showing you the actual style rules as they're being uh, rendered. So all y'all may know in the element inspector, as you, you know, hover over things, it will show in the browser your currently selected element. And you can also uh, use the up and down key keyboard to navigate. You can expand and collapse all that fun stuff. If you want, and maybe this is somebody's trick, hopefully not, uh, if you want this not to be pinned to the bottom, you can actually pin it on the right hand side. Some people like that. So on the upper right hand side here, this guy right here will either pop it to the right hand side and toggle that way, or if you hold it down, you can switch the toggle to go between popping in the window out into its own window and uh, popping it back in. I think people with super wide monitors prefer this style. Um, I've always been on the bottom kind of guy, but you know whatever floats your boat. Second tab is the network tab, and this is super handy for showing you everything that comes down the wire as you do a request. Now, if you first pop it open, it will be empty, and that's because you did not have a developer tools enabled as the request originally went down. So you need to pop it open, and if you want to see all of the assets coming down, you reload. So in this view, you see every single uh, asset that's been requested from the server. Uh, you see the method requested, <clears throat> the status message given, the type of the thing, um, as well as the timeline of when the asset was first requested, 
um, how long it took to download, how long it blocked. It's nicely broken out into what was connecting time, what was sending time, and all that kind of stuff. This is very handy when testing to see if you have caching set up properly because um, you'll see if stuff is actually being transferred or, or if it's just being loaded from cache. You can also filter these by type. I'm hoping this is not somebody's trick because if it is, I'm squashing it. Uh, you can say, just show me scripts, just show me images, just style sheets. Uh, if you're doing WebSocket stuff, you can just focus in on that. And you can also click through onto a specific item and get detailed request and response information for that asset as it was requested from the server. So here we see the request URL uh, for this style sheet, status code, all the headers, as well as the response headers. Hopping over to the sources tab, here's where you can actually get in and look at and modify um, the different uh, sources, whether it's JavaScript, CSS, <clears throat> you can navigate, you can view, you can edit those files through here. There's all sorts of really cool stuff you can do from inside this view. If you're actually using Chrome as an editor, you can save files back to uh, local disk, if that's somebody's trick. I didn't ruin it because you should still come up and show that. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff from this view that I don't really get into very much. Um, it will also show you content scripts. I believe these are loaded from extensions. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, that's all broken out by domain. So you can see we got Facebook loading stuff, we got Twitter loading stuff on this page. Timeline I never use, so if somebody wants to get in the timeline, feel free. It's shirt worthy. Profiles is great. This is similar to like, uh, well, this is, no, I was thinking of audits. This is actually for uh, CPU profiling. Um, I find this is much more useful to use from inside your code where you can call console.profile start and profile end, and you can actually get a CPU um, and memory profiles from an actual specific block of code that you're running. That's a little bit more accurate than hitting start and then going and doing your thing and then hitting end because a lot of times you want to focus on a very specific tight loop or something. Um, so that's usually how I use this pane, but anyways, it's for CPU profiling. Resources, very similar to sources, except it also shows you session storage, cookies being set. You can modify your cookies here. <clears throat> Um, it's broken everything out by frames. So a, a similar type of view, but with a little bit different angle at it. Audits is what I was recently thought of when I pulled up profiles. This is similar to like the Y slow tool, which was so popular, where it would actually do a audit both of network utilization and web page performance uh, of your of your web page. So you can have it audit the present state, but usually you want to get a good view and reload the entire state. This usually takes a few moments, but it will store the results over on the left-hand side. So if you want to make changes to your server, you can go run an additional audit and then flip back and forth between the two and see what's going down. I'm not going to wait for that. Console is where most people live. This is where I live a lot. A lot of times I'll just pop over the console on somebody else's website and just do a few things to <laughs> just see what's going on. Uh, I will pop this open when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm doing some quick math or something and I don't want to go to the calculator or to the spotlight. Anything that you can do from your JavaScript, you can do from the console. Um, and the, the amount of things you can do here is, is ridiculous. So definitely a good place for people with tricks uh, to hang out. <clears throat> and this is non-standard, so I won't talk about that. There's also settings. You can pop open this guy. I'll leave that for everybody else. But that's a basic rundown of DevTools. Um, hopefully, nobody was listening to that, and they were over here. Bam. <laughs> yeah, boy. That's awesome. So.
Now we're going to start our dry t-shirt contest. And it looks like, oh, someone just, someone just popped to the top here. Let me, oh, let me also say, I hacked this app together in about two or three hours. Um, I don't understand how Firebase's security really works. If you were to want to hack this and you know move yourself to the top or uh, you know do something like that, that would be super lame. So uh, don't do that. The Wi-Fi? They're right here. Okay. Yeah, guess dot. So without any further ado, we have a whole bevy of tips and tricks. And mine are slowly floating to the bottom, so that's great. Oh, I also have, so I just got together a few web pages that we can use for examples. If you want to come up and use any web page you want, this is a little iPhone app um, that I'm working, I've been working with a company out of New York working on. It's called Social List. It's in private beta right now, public beta soon. But they had to have a share uh, functionality. So there's like little web pages that just show it's for collaborative list making. This is a calculator that I built for uh, some teenage and uh, young students that I teach at my church building. So it's very basic, but it does, it's got some JavaScript going on. Uh, this is another page that we use for that. You click on the boxes, they disappear. I just figured I'd have a few like playground type of areas where if you want to have, you know, an element to inspect or something to go against, you can use that. Obviously, if you need to use a specific web page to display something, uh, feel free. So, who's getting? Oh, dude, you can't get a site pen shirt. <laughs> OK, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> so first up is Nick. He says you can ignore specific code or libraries when stepping through code. So Nick, come on down. You going to type? I'm going to hold yes. this. OK. My lovely assistant. <laughs> um, so you can, if you're stepping through code, and let's say you're using a library like jQuery or Dojo, um, and you're not worried about that code because you just trust that it's working, but you're, you have a bug in your code, you can actually tell DevTools to ignore that code completely so that when you step into a, that, it will just skip over and then continue on in your code. So all of the code inside of jQuery or whatever will continue playing, and then you'll, it'll deliver you right back to, um, to your code. Can you demo that? I, I was trying to think of an app that has unbuilt code that I could step through. And I can't. I couldn't think of one in time. Okay. Unfortunately, but I can show you how to get to it. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Yeah. Show us how to get to it. We'll call that good. Okay. If so it's undemoable, whatever. I'm going to open Canary. Ooh. You don't need Canary. Um, you can, but Jared has his presentation running in regular Chrome, and I don't want to screw that up. But you do this by going to, oops, no, about flags, Chrome flags, or Chrome flags, and then you look for experimental. DevTools. Uh, yeah. DevTools experiments. Enable that. You're going to have to relaunch your browser. So we'll do that. Relaunch Canary. Now, when we open up the DevTools, we, and we open up the, oops. Wow. We open up the configuration here. Now we have this experiments tab here. Sweet. We click on that, and then you go scroll down, and uh, where is it? Ah, enable frameworks debugging support. Check that. So now we have to close DevTools and let it restart. And now, when we open up the settings again, we can go to general. <laughs> they make this really easy. <laughs> Dude, you're trying to have like the most elite. <laughs> Don't be intimidated. This is totally, totally worth setting up though because it's really nice. Uh, so then here, Skip stepping through sources with particular names. So from here, you have a pattern. And in this, you can put a regular expression. Where, what's, <laughs> now please explain what a regular expression is. <laughs> uh, this will be a regular expression to the, the path to the file that you want to ignore, or files. So let's say you have all of your code in like a, 
I don't know, a vendors, then you could just put that in there and all of your vendor code will just be ignored when you're stepping through it. Or if you want to do like a specific one, you could just do like, I don't know, the one that I do all the time is dojo base declare. And I just ignore that all the time because that's what gives us classical inheritance. Yeah. And when we try and look, call the super method, we have to step into this method called inherited that will then go find the super method and instead of having to step through yes. all of that to where it calls dot apply, I can just ignore all of that and be right back into my code. <laughs> so, um, Twitter. Twitter has the answers to everything. Yeah. I think Paul Irish. I saw a tweet by him. Wow. But yeah, so. It's, it's very complicated to get set up. You have to restart your browser, then restart DevTools, yes. and then enter a regular expression, and then you're good. Dude, I love you and so much And if you want right to do now. more, then just do or, like in All right. Ajax. All right. So yeah, thank you. Hey, hand for Nick. So I'm glad I didn't try to demo that, because <laughs> It would have, he would have been here for a while. <laughs> but that is rad. All right, so you drilled it. You get a shirt. It's not a site pen shirt. Just let me know what shirt you want. Next up, you can use the dev tools as your IDE. And Mackie, come on down. Just talk about it. If you want to demo it, you can. If it's too hard to demo. Actually, my plan with these kids was to have the entire class run inside of Chrome and do it similar to that. This ended up being not an ideal place for them to begin typing, and, and it was too small and, and clunky. So they ended up in Notepad++ and Sublime Text, but uh, I did want to do, do this, so it's very cool. All right. You probably should refresh to like confirm that what I said actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to Cool. Now get out of my code. <laughs> this code's really bad, by the way, so 
It's for kids. All right. So you get a shirt. You get a changelog shirt. Okay, Zach. First object lateral shirt, how to toggle through color formats. Come on down. This is awesome. We're going to be here all night. Yeah, mine are not about JavaScript at all. <laughs> so you, when you have a color here and you got the little selector at the bottom, yes, you can shift click on it and it will go through. The Ooh, ah. Shirt worthy. Good job, Zach. <laughs> Okay. Zach drilled it. Oh, dude. And Mackie. You can wait on me anyway, because I'm not sure if I can remember where to get that at. Where okay. Nobody vote for this one. <laughs> okay, this is uh, Raw Right. I should have had the full names come in. Rich. Rich. Come on down, Rich. I got Firefox going on up in here, although it may not be up to date. <laughs> Oh, download an update. <laughs> How do I make it not do this? <laughs> we're we're going to be here all night. Oh, it's going pretty fast. <laughs> this, is, this is what happens every time I launch Firefox. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Sorry, guys. They really fell behind in my eyes. But apparently they have a, what's it called? Responsive, it's got a responsive design. design mode. Right on. Click on and change the change the device size up and cool. look like a phone or a iPad. All right, can you do it? Can you demo it? If you go to that, uh, the reason I had that that one socials page up is because it will do responsive. Oh, we're having an OS clash here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get to the dev tools. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, F12. Toggle, right toggle tools? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see. There it is. Full click. Push down. There you go. All right on. Okay, and then you're over here. Let's see. How do you do stuff? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, you can pick a different. Full click. <laughs> let me drive. Let me drive. Okay. All right. So uh, you can change resolution. Change you can change. It'll change the screen size, and then this over here will uh, rotate the screen mm -hmm. like it's uh, like you turned your phone or something. Oh, sweet. Just this arrow one. Oh, the arrow one. Yeah. Oh, right on. And then this this other one you can simulate a click event or I mean a touch event with that. And take a screenshot. And then you can take a screenshot. That's pretty cool. Is that for like uh, sending to people like demo style or like here's what it would look like on the phone? The screenshot? I assume so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just discovered it like 20 minutes ago. Oh, sweet. <laughs> uh, news to me, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd read about it being in Chrome and I tried to get at it in Chrome and I couldn't get to it. And I'll, show, I'll show you a Chrome. I did have that was one of mine. Unless somebody else has that? I'll show it to you in Chrome. The reason I had this one is it's, uh, it's, it is responsive, but it also has a specific iPhone feature. So this thing has a button that says open in socialist, which if you're on the iPhone will actually pop open the app. But it's actually a feature that doesn't matter at all if you're on any other device. So uh, it's like the one case where actual like user agent sniffing makes sense, not feature sniffing, because the feature is I am an iPhone. Um, so you can simulate that in Chrome by popping the drawer open. There's an emulation tab here. And so now you can set, and they have actually have different devices you can set to. You might want to you you turn on set emulation that up first, first. Yeah. FYI, in the settings. Yeah. No, that's working. Yeah, you got to refresh to reload. Oh, is it disabled by, by default? And I have it enabled. So anyways, you can do the same similar thing. Although, I don't does it have the where you can rotate the, the aspect ratio? Because that's pretty sweet. Does anybody know if, if Chrome has that?
There you go. There it is, Rich. It is buried, though. I like how in Firefox it's like right there. Right on. Yeah, good job. So, Rich, you get an interface t-shirt. All right. Uh, Console.table. This is by somebody who's... Dude, Juan, that's your GitHub <laughs> avatar? Oh, yeah. That's weak, dude. Weak sauce. <laughs> okay, come on up, Juan. You can do it. What? All right. What do I do? Oh, you have not used it before? No. Oh, Console.table? Okay. That's why I said, like, it'd be better if we all did this together than if I just was up here. Is it just console.table and you yeah. send it some data? Yeah. Well, if you did a, like, a list of objects or something with the same title. You want to type that? Yeah, I'll do it. Right. Uh, <laughs> we'll just whiff together a few objects with the same title real quick. All right. So let's just call it. It's just going to, like, pretty print them? Yeah. Cool. Nice. I never knew this. That's pretty cool. Sweet. So I found it handy when I was going through Marvel's API and I had a whole list of comic books that I wanted to get through. And so I could look at it table wise rather than the JSON. That's awesome. So it takes an array and then you can put anything inside that array? That's what or I did before, but you, I'm sure you can meh. look at the docs and see. What it's it was it's mainly for displaying object stuff. Sweet. Thanks, Juan. Let's hear for Juan. <laughs> Change log t shirt coming your way. Uh, did you figure it out? What? They changed it, but we need to see, we need to see help. All right, come on down. You can, <laughs> you can win all four t-shirts, I don't care. Yeah, they've changed the dev tools like two builds ago. They, they hit all that stuff. I don't, I wasn't happy. But if you go over here, you go to the console, yep. and you hit escape again, uh, and you go to rendering, you can actually do a few different things, but uh, I don't know. I saw this a few months ago. Adi Osmani did an uh, article or a post on, they sh were showing on Pinterest. So like if you have, if you're having rendering issues, like they were showing like infinite scroll on Pinterest yeah. where you'll see what's being repainted as you scroll and you know, your whole page shouldn't be <coughs> being repainted. So right. you can do that. Um, then there's a few other things. Um, like showing FPS so you can see how quickly your page is rendering. That's pretty sweet. So, pretty simple, but. Very cool. If you want to, I mean, you could go to a website and turn it on, but. But it's. Paint little red, it'll turn everything red as it's being repainted. So, like uh, Pinterest.com? Yeah. If I scroll Pinterest, that should do it? They probably fixed most of it, but yeah, you'll see it if you turn it on. After I establish this secure connection. Yep. What? Can I just look at the web pages? You have to sign up to look at Pinterest? If, if you Google something, you can yeah, just go to the, you can Google, Google, Google page. Yeah. Pinterest something. I'm going to Google <laughs> <laughs> everything on Pinterest. Cool. All right, so I pop it open. Yep. I got uh, in the rendering set, I got show paint. Rec oh, I'm emulating, though. So let's turn that off. OK. Oh. Only when DevTools is open, apparently. Yeah. It's definitely more of a multi-monitor. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of trippy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very cool. I'm not sure what to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, so drilled it, buddy. Nice job. Travis. Travis. Come on down. This is a commando or control O open source files. Search. Just open source files, right? Oh, open source files. It's just how you read it. Yeah, it is. So, okay. All right. So it's fine. Oh. It's the problem with driving someone else's. I got it. All right. So, all right. Oh, we got all sorts of craziness going on. Commando, we'll open whatever you want, right? What? Commando, write that down. <laughs> so you, it'll it'll do camel case, it'll do periods, it'll do all sorts of stuff. Once you're in a file, then you can use. Oh God, that's minified. 
Show us your skills, man. <laughs> you, can use, you, can use, you can live code minified stuff, can't you? Yeah, no. You can just you yeah, click in there. Work. You just have to click on everything. That's command L, I think, is the go to line. Which one is the go to line? Well, command F is totally broken in Chrome. What the hell? So, anyway, so yeah, so you can. Commando. Commando. I literally open Commando up the little like drawer and I look through the files <laughs> and I click on the thing. No. Commando calc. <laughs> awesome. Zach, you're back. Got a lot of repeat performers over here. Are you guys voting too? Yes. Uh, just just curious, I can't really. Okay, what are you gonna do? Oh, no. oh wait, wait, no, you're you're, you're off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, source maps, FTW, including. Oh wait, what? <laughs> Whoever can get here first. All right, I'm gonna give you this one. Hold on, let me lock you in. All right. <laughs> Wait, what's this amount about? Just switch the tab. The active hover. Oh, yeah. So if you have like a hover rule that you want to, if you have like a hover rule applied to a parent and you don't want to always hover your mouse over something. Yes. Do you have anything like that here on these demos? A hover rule applied to a parent. Do you have anything that like hover or active rules here? <sighs> no. I don't know. These are super basic. That's the problem. Okay. Pinterest might. Let's go to my cool website. <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of see that the you color. You haven't blogged in a while. Yeah, I you gotta turn that rendering paint off. God, this website's the worst. So you see how the uh, text color changes when you hover over? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Guys. what is happening? <laughs> okay, the text color changes here? Yeah. Um, so I go here and then there's this little like it's like a dotted thing with a little arrow on it. Mm. If you have that element selected, why isn't it showing up? Yeah, just inspect the element on that thing. Oh, there you got it. Oh, that's weird. Um, so it'll show up here, and then you can click this little thing and hit uh, hover. Hover. Ah. And then it will apply your style. So if you have like a menu that shows up on hover, you can. Now, does that, what if you're doing, a, what if you want JavaScript to get on that? What do you mean? Like, what if you want the JavaScript guy to be like, oh, oh you're hovering? Fine. Yeah. And you probably have to do that in the console. All right. Sorry. I was hoping for an awesome trick then. Nope. Still, still pretty good. Still pretty good. I'm just going to read some of these and see if there's some awesome ones. OK. Something's on the move. Oh, this one's the, oh, is that you again, Juan? No. All right, sweet. Dash Wettergren. Come on down, Dash. You can use the snippets tab and the sources to automate tests. All right. So. without fail. You, sir, drilled it. Okay, Nick, you want to show us how to find detached DOM nodes?
I can actually show a demo of this one. All right. What? I know. Maybe. Hopefully. You memorize that? <laughs> You're just showing off tonight, Nick. <laughs> okay. So you can find attached DOM nodes. I actually have this uh, snippet of awesome Dojo code that uh, generates 101 detached nodes and throws them into the page. Uh, but you don't see them, so you don't know that they're there. But what I can do is I can go to profiles and take a heap snapshot, take the snapshot, and you get this big list of junk. Yeah. You can filter that right here, and I just will filter by detached. And, oh, actually, it's 102 nodes. And I can see it right here. And this is the element that it's actually, that they're attached to. But I thought they're detached. Well, uh, I'm sorry. This is the one that is still holding a reference to them. Ah. And so this element, my detached node, contains 101 nodes under it. And all of these red ones are the detached ones. Then on the, this is something I think that's new, but on the timeline, you can actually collect garbage. Oh, no, I have to free it. I have a little free button here. Now I can collect garbage. And then if I go back and uh, rerun a new profile. And Gonzo. It, uh, it released that reference to them, and then I garbage collected, and so they should all be cleaned up. But I, I am obviously lying, because they're still there. <laughs> anyway, you can see that they're still there. But You're a liar and cheat. <laughs> Well, you're a good one. All this and more at his dojo training. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's even true. Either way, you drilled it. OK, Firefox has a 3D page inspector. This is coming from Travis. Travis thank you. Yeah, this one I do remember, but it's totally rad. That's one that is super impressive, and I've never actually used it in real life. Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't. It's like, what's? It's like, what's this guy? Can you actually like select? So I can I get at this element then? Is it selected right now? It looks like that. Uh, anybody who grew up, anybody who grew up in the '80s or '90s. Remember the HBO intro? Da -na 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 -na. You guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Where it zooms past? <laughs> Come on, this is the craziest, awesomest thing I've just. If you turn it around, it'll actually show the page in reverse. Yeah. You can That's see it in the reverse there. It's actually the back side of the page. I don't trust myself. <laughs> I feel kind of dirty looking at the back side of the page like that. <laughs> Just like, I don't know if that's is that legit, I guess. All right, that was awesome. Did you know you can set DOM breakpoints? Come on down. I like to drive. Cool. Uh, you want to go to uh, how you use your drill, drill it? Thing. Oh, you're just going to use this? Wait, this? So if you right click on there, go to inspect element, and you could, that's all encapsulated inside of uh, this entire row. So if you right click on the TR, yeah. you could do a break on, and you could do subtree modifications. Okay. So when you clicked on that, now if you clicked on the drill it, uh, we are in debug, right? Uh, yeah. For me, the top row. That you can no, you're no longer. <laughs> Oh, you got two. You got two coming. And you go to the one that you said. You haven't, you, you haven't drilled that one yet. <laughs> oh, it didn't. Why did he let me drive? I don't know. We'll so do it again then. We'll do it. I'll do this one. Uh, so on the row, 
There, that row? Yep, breakpoint. Breakpoint on subtree modifications? Yep. And, and drill it? Vote for me. How about that? I'm going to vote for you. And that should have broke. <laughs> it didn't break. Um, you don't have any open breakpoints. I got rid of it. I blame it on Angular. <laughs> <laughs> that should have I agree. That should have worked. <laughs> Basically monitors everything inside that tree, and if anything mo is modified, it will break point on there, which is good when you have event handlers modifying your DOM. Yep. That's about the only way I've been able to find things. All right on. Thanks, dude. Thanks. Did you want to also do conditional breakpoints in the debugger while you're here? Do you know how to do it? Let's see here. Uh, no. Calculator app has got easy JS in it. Yeah, it does. Although it's still on iPhone 5. Uncheck the box. All right. So this is on uh, event listeners? Uh, no, in sources, JavaScript. Oh, you want to go to my calc.js? Is that here? Yep. So, yeah, that's the number of button clicks, right? Um, yeah, yeah, on click. This line? I'm just trying to figure out what your code is. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> so, when you click on a number button, it gets the text of the number, and the text of these, these are actually empty spans. <laughs> And it will fill them in. So it'll put a seven there. If you put a breakpoint basically on any line that you know it's going to hit, and then if you right click on it, right click on the breakpoint, on the blue point, then you just say edit breakpoint, and you just put JavaScript in there of whatever your condition is. So and like, when the condition is true, then it'll stop. Number you know, equals, equals just equals three. three. Just, the, just the actual conditional. Yep. Yeah. Someone said three, and I just listened to him. <laughs> I was going to add on to that one. Okay. That you can actually execute JavaScript within those breakpoints. If you just do console.log something and and false, it'll execute that, resolve it to false, but it'll still console.log out whatever you're doing or execute any other JavaScript. So you can console log but not actually break. Is that what you're saying? You can execute JavaScript within your so condition. just log out whatever the state is at that time. Right. So you right here. Just that. inject some stuff in there. Yep. So this just injects stuff right in there. Is that what you're saying? Well, because once it hits that point, it's going to execute in the context of wherever you're at. And so you can you can put code in there to execute additional things and then just resolve to false and it won't it won't break right there, but it'll execute the code and do whatever you want. Break ones that don't break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like my break points to break, but good stuff, guys. Okay. How are we doing on time, Zach? It's 7.40. What do we go to? We have a, uh, this is awesome. We get, ooh, who's this? Someone vote this one up. Pup is my name. Dude, you're getting, you're getting up there. Everybody vote that one up, just for some fresh blood. The style's on the right. Come on, get it up there. <laughs> Someone's like, yeah, come on up. <laughs> the styles on the right can take you to the CSS file in the sources tab. This is similar to being able to get to the sources really quick. Um, cool. I like to mess around with this stuff here when I'm messing with styles, but if I want to get more hardcore, you can click right here. It'll take you straight to the sources file, straight to that line, and you can edit the CSS directly right there. Sweet. Just a quick way to switch between the sources tab and the... You command click on one, like in the body. No, 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 we're in the... Oh, right here? It'll take you right to the line. Yep, same thing. Yep. What? Yes. And it'll also the value, too. You can also click on the value. Command click on the value. So I'm on 50 pixels, and I have a command click. It takes you right there. Oh, it'll take you right to the cursor. Just wherever your cursor is currently? You can't be editing, though. I don't know. This one's kind of too hard, guys. That's pretty sweet. What was your name? John? Yep. Let's hear for John. Let's see if we got any more fresh blood. 
Remote debugging, debugging on Android Chrome. Who hasn't voted for that one? Are you guys voting? <laughs> Don't just vote for. <laughs> oh, I'm waiting. Oh, there it is. Matt Still, come on down. Win yourself a Site Pen T-shirt. Hopefully, you brought your own hardware. Yeah, I brought my own hardware. All right. Let's see if you have uh, the right USB drivers on here. <laughs> there, there may or may not be viruses on here. There probably are viruses on here. All right, so uh, emulation is awesome, and you can use it a lot, but at some point you may run into a problem that only manifests itself on actual devices. So in that case, um, doing actual remote debugging on a device that's running Android 4.0 and above, and that's Chrome, is awesome. Uh, the way you can do that is you can just go to Chrome Devices. Uh -oh. oh no! Do you have Canary on here? You're not drilling it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! What are you doing? Do you have to like check a box in the Dev Tools? Maybe. The this was going so well. <laughs> I'm nervous for you. Oh, this is bad. And to think I cheat voted him to the top to get him up here. You cheat voted me? Well, I, I encouraged <laughs> votes for you. I was a lobbyist. Experimental extensions APIs. You know, I'm just going to enable everything on here. Just get, <laughs> go for it, man. Experimental HTTP asynchronous. Oh my gosh. This is so horrible. I'm so going to get hacked. Somebody else get on here. Yeah, web MIDI. Do you want Android. Web MIDI on here? Search for Android. Oh. <laughs> ah! Look at all those Android Everyone hits. Everyone, do this. Yes. Oh. What, what? What is going on? <laughs> those corners are so hot. USB devices. Oh, they're so hot. Oh, I'm gonna crash everything on here. Yes, allow <laughs> USB devices. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, uh, Omaha Bounty Hunter. All, all of the tabs that I have open on Chrome on here are showing up on here. And what I can do is I can say, oh, let's just inspect on Omaha Bounty Hunter. You're so redeeming yourself right now. <laughs> and what this gives me is a dev tools that is open on no. uh, this fancy website called Omaha Bounty Hunter. No way. And as I'm highlighting stuff, you might be able to see it's actually oh, wow. selecting oh, items. Uh, I can take an, you know, an element on here. Delete it. Remove it. Oh. Uh, you know, I'm going to remove the entire Don't. body. Does it work on Windows? Oh, oh. oh no, it's kind of gone. Uh, this does work on Windows. It works on Linux. Uh, you have the access to the entire network tab. So you can do remote debugging on items on here. Uh, but sweet. even cooler, let me see. So if I do a focus tab, let's see if this works appropriately. Oh, so this, so when I do a focus tab, it actually switches the tabs. Are you stalking on me here. on this Android device, dude? I'm, I mean, I, I may be stalking you as much as I normally do. <laughs> uh, and if I do an inspect and let's see, uh, so, oh crap, this isn't going to, rendering. You're doing so good. So well. I can do show paint rectangles. So I can do the same uh, thing when I'm scrolling, it shows me the items, show an FPS meter. Oh, is this the one? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the coolest thing about it is once, uh, once you click on oh, this little item, then you're actually seeing what's on this device. And as I scroll or zoom, it actually Ooh. changes it on the page. And uh, you can, if you, oh my gosh, <laughs> corners. So as I, as I scroll on here, it actually is scrolling on the device. So it kind of pairs it as you're zooming around. Oh, you have inverted scroll? Oh, my gosh. Inverted what? scroll is the best. I cannot work with you. All right. So that's it. I'm done. Did I see screenshot mode? Or screen cast? Or what? Did it say screen grab? Uh, there may be a way to do I thought I saw breaks. screen. I thought I saw it there for a second. I don't know. Screen capture? I don't know. You just blew my out. mind, and you broke my computer in Dang seven you. different ways. You're, you're welcome. Now get out of here. You have Bonsai Buddy on here now. <laughs> That was epic. All right, anybody on this list that hasn't gotten up and gotten a shirt? Who's the, who's that question mark? Yeah, who is that? 
you can inspect the inspector, viewing the source and the resources behind it. Okay, we'll wait a few seconds here. And, okay, come on up. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, give it bonus vote. Okay. Admittedly, ran across this one about a month ago. Someone was asking on Stack Overflow how to clear the console history. So actually what you type in, not what it just renders. Uh, as far as I know, the only way you can do this is to actually pop it out into, no, nope, wrong with the button. Yeah, you got to hold it down. If you want to pop it, and go to that guy. There you go. That. Gotcha. Yeah. Come here. You have to know this. Uh, the only way I know is to use the keyboard shortcut. So on Mac, it's command option I or J. Oh, it's another inspector. And you come in here, and you can actually go into local storage. Oh, at least two. You know, it keeps track of resolution. Wow. Somewhere in here is console history, so you can actually delete it. You guys are going to start looking at my... <laughs> don't look at my inspector history. <laughs> so that's like Inception style. Kind of, yeah. Awesome. I don't know you how far it goes, but... <laughs> yeah, can you do it again? What is it? Command option I? I mean, it's the same... Uh, yeah. I or J. J brings up the console, I brings up the... Dude. <laughs> <laughs> So many. I don't even know where I am. <laughs> I don't know. That may be the awesomest and least useful. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea how useful it is. It's just a notable one. Uh, That's I thought it was cool. for Chrome extensions. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, or prefer the people who are deving on the inspector, right? Yeah. For the dev team. Yeah. All right, y'all. Well, this list is never ending. It's uh, 10 to 8. Well, should we wrap it, Zach? Does anybody have anything up, up here that they absolutely have to learn about? You can put, uh, copy, you can put the dev tools on the left. That's very important. <laughs> on the left? Yeah, As opposed to the right? Yep. You have to enable the flag. That's dumb. <laughs> oh. Somebody just re-entered it. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to call it a wrap. Everybody who contributed, thank you. Um, this thing secretly submits your email address to me, so I have your contact information. Actually, let me just talk a little bit. This Firebase is pretty cool. So uh, just to give you info, like you can actually peer into all the stuff. So the, the ones that are in the list are called tricks. Uh, you can click down and see like actually what's going on in there. So when you submit one, I store your email just so I can get a hold of you later. Uh, your avatar, the actual shirt, which is just randomly generated off of those four. Um, and then the votes count. The, just the easiest way I thought of doing the votes is just to actually put your GitHub unique ID in there uh, and then sort on votes count. That way I could just easily have people not voting more than once and just reloading the page. I figured y'all would be cheating. <laughs> but I'm sure that's super easily hacked. So I could actually edit this, uh, preserve log. So I can change this here inside my, they call it a forge, and hop back over here and it should be updated. Yeah. So it's pretty rad. Like everybody has synced. It's pretty cool. Um, and then I just move the people who won basically after when I said drilled it, it just takes them out of the tricks collection and puts them in a tricked collection. And so like these are the ones that I actually got. And so, yeah, I can get a hold of you. So that's pretty cool. Mostly I just wanted to try out Firebase, um, which is pretty rad. The, the drawback to it is you can only get 50 connections on the free account at the same time. And we had 77 people uh, RSVP, which they didn't show up. Who RSVPs? It doesn't come. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I either, yeah, I mean, just say no if you're not coming. Uh, so I had to like contact them and be like, can I get more than 50 just in case? Because I don't want people to get them blocked out, but pretty cool. So yeah, if you want a t-shirt, I'll be getting a hold of you and you can tell me if it's an interface one, you got to pick a color, tell me your size, and then we'll either just, you know, drop them off at your house or email them to you. <laughs> So thanks for coming. Thanks for sharing your tricks. <laughs>